All right, hey guys. So, but before we get into the video, really quick, I do want to say that hey, sorry about the webcam. I know it's like probably distracting it being over on this side. It's I definitely should have had it over here, so it's covering some important stuff. But at the same time, I went to go like maybe just re re record it or something. But then I was looking at the arena, the top players, and I feel like this week, this first week of Platinum Arena, because all the hype, it was actually a really good week to get a lot of good information. I don't think people are going to go nearly as hard on like rushing um, Platinum Arena and and pushing pushing the leaderboards as much. So I think I'm just going to leave it in. Yeah, I, I just want to leave it as is, even though it's probably kind of annoying as a viewer, uh, because uh, there's a lot of good information there. Of what teams are actually good and what teams like actually work when it comes to in a very competitive environment, because unfortunately we've seen the Platinum Arena rewards and they're pretty garbage, and which is disappointing. I didn't know that when you know recording this video, so. Uh, that's kind of a bummer. I think a lot of people are not going to push Platinum Marina nearly as hard unless they really incentivize the the top, like top 15 or whatever. Yeah, you know, like have tiers based on where you place in Platinum Marina. But with that, let's get into the video and sorry about my camera. Hey guys, this is going to here with another Rage Allergies video. In today's video, I want to talk about Arena. And when the update came out, what Platinum was going to be, I think a lot of people had expectations on it. I was hoping for a way to make the Great Hall better, like get another tier and make this you know how currently it they how they have this progression system maybe make platinum tier and it, you know if you can reach it the, the metals would give you a, a easier grind like so you can actually finish this without grinding a billion games that's what i was expecting with arena it ended up becoming a you know kind of like grandmaster you know uh, how they do it like league of legends style you know a very small percent like challenge or whatever i was not expecting that but at the same time when i heard that i was kind of bumped but I think it's significantly better than I gave it credit for initially before like in practice a lot better than what I thought. And so we don't really know what the rewards are going to be when, you know, like, cause you get a different chest for, for like up here. Uh, we don't know what this is going to be. Uh, to be honest, I don't really care, you know, like what this is. I mean, they, I, I'm sure the people that actually make up the, the, they definitely care. But for me, this is definitely made the uh, arena a lot more enjoyable. And so I've like actually having a, a range because used to be, you would look at if you looked at the progression system here, everyone would just hit a wall here, and you didn't know how good they were. There's people that make it all the way up to here, where they have you can randomly see teams like this in your stack of ten. But then you would also, you know, see teams like you go into arena and like my like my level, or like you know, I was up into like close to close to platinum. Like the differences are staggering. Like you know, these four hundred points or you know, seven hundred points, whatever, like that difference, and it's. It's cool now that you can have a slow progression instead of just getting slammed with like one of the best teams here and there. And then, um, but for the most part, just have like mind numbingly easy matchups, like for example, this dude. So comparatively, and it's all relative to where you're at and stuff like that. It was just, and then also it was, I like the competitive aspect. I like to know ex if, if I'm doing well, like in Star Wars Galaxy Heroes, for example, you would see like an actual top character in your shard and then you can actually go in and check out their gear and see what they're doing and then you you learn a lot that way it's cool and it's kind of a fun thing just not necessarily needing the rewards but just knowing how good you are like that, that games like this need that you can actually like talk to people like oh what are you doing like uh and then you can actually have a an objective metric to gauge that between other players instead of just like oh i think my team's really good like oh man and then you just go and smoke nine garbage people and then you have one challenge here and there. So it, just having this made a shocking amount of difference to how much I enjoy it and how much I actually want to do it. And so I think that's really cool. What, what I want to talk about is like the, the benefits of or, or what we've learned from now having that information that we've been wanting. Like what, what I've learned from that. A lot of it, I think everyone pretty much knew when we look at the top characters is, you know, Arbiter. Arbiter is great. You know, Speed Aura is great. Um, uh, the other the other things that are pretty obvious is Hegemon. Hegemon's everywhere. If you have Hegemon, awesome. Um, some of the other stuff that, for me, I'm just going to talk about the stuff that I think is interesting that I was not expecting. Just like the, the combinations of characters, like, for example, Lord Shazar being, I think when you see the listed characters, uh, when you have Lord Shazar or Prince Kaimar, like me having both of them, if you asked, asked me which one I thought was going to be better, I would have totally went with uh, Kaimar, but in Arena, you see a lot more Lord Shazars. Like I happen to be losing to a lot more Shazars than Kaimars. Like that, the bombs are actually 
pretty intense. Also having that little bit of speed, it's hard to tell if that actually came into play when playing against someone, but I can see that especially the higher up your speed goes, the better that percentage gets. And yeah, you know, and it actually makes a difference. So some other things too is the combination of multiple speed boosters, usually like I came at it from the perspective of just having one, but you see combinations of like Arbiter and, and Seeker. You see Arbiter and Lissandra. I think that's probably the best. The, the two best are going to be Arbiter and Seeker and Arbiter and Lissandra. Then I've seen other people do like double Arbiter just to make sure they get multiple turn meter boosts for the characters that do damage and are a little slower. See that a lot. Molly Tankards in a lot of comps like have like AoE Provoke is a crazy impactful move. Um, you see a lot of Martyr, you see a lot of Valkyrie, kind of evenly split. Uh, probably see a little bit more, if if I had to say, I'd say you probably see a little bit more um, Valkyrie than Martyr. Uh, the uh, the most common epics that you see in a sea full of legendaries are going to be three of them. You see Skull Crowns, you see Seekers, and Madame Ceres, I, I think are probably the most common um, epics you see. And you know, two of them are Void Epics, kind of a bummer. Um, that's what I see a lot of. Uh, you see a lot of double skull crown. That's probably one of the few characters that you see multiple of. I mean, there's a, not too many characters unless you're you're pulling something crazy like this guy. He's a streamer. If you haven't checked him out, if you haven't seen him, check him out. But he has he pulled two Kutraxes, and you see him using a lot of that. Uh, that not not many like duplicates in arena except for those guys like your damage dealers. Um, what else do you see? Mountain King is not a meme. He actually is is awesome. He hits really hard, really tanky, like kind of like bruiser, bruiser, and then like smoke someone. Um, has a lot of like base resist and stuff, so it's easy to to build him you know, like a lot of a lot of resist and give him the stats you need to actually do damage and survive. Um, like well, for defense, the, these defensive comps are way different than people's um uh. Like actual like offensive team, the big difference there. Not as much like this guy used to be known as like the arena god, but you don't really see too much of of this dude of the tower. Like towers, towers in there. You see tower, but you don't see too much of him. Um, as much as I would expect, anyway. Uh, you see, CC is is really important. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. Like. Like speed, it's all speed, speed, speed most of the time. It, if you want, you need to have really good defensive characters if you are going to be pulling a high resistance defensive team. I think it is cool that those do exist. Um, you see, like they all kind of have the same theme going on. Like uh, most of them have Sir Nicholas. Uh, a lot of them have like Valkyrie and like Martyr and like Molly. Molly are going to be like the characters you see a lot. Warlords, another one that you see a lot in these defensive teams. Um, but it, it also it's, it's kind of hard to gauge these teams with Hegemon, like because Hegemon just does so much that when I see a Hegemon team, it's like, it, can you really take this into account if it's good or not? Um, you know, like a lot of these are just good characters, but I feel like Hegemon kind of carries carries a lot of teams. Like a lot of these, especially at the top, they're all good teams and probably really strong even without Hedgy. But uh, having Hedgy definitely makes this team way stronger than it, what it would be with any other character in its place. Um, like, look at how much Molly you see. Like, like Harvest Jack. Harvest Jack actually gets in there. I, I use Harvest Jack. I think Harvest Jack's actually pretty good. Um, I think people are kind of ragging on him because he doesn't do too much damage, but he just it provides so much control. He has two really good abilities. Um, his A3 and his A2 are awesome. His A1 even is really cool, especially if you have counterattack, um, being able to steal those buffs. And so it's like, yeah, you, you get like Valkyrie. Um, she She's so good because she has both the turn meter buffs and the turn meter re reduction. So her being able to go based on buffs is awesome. Um, and then, you know, like with that in combination with like Harvest Jack and uh, stuff, it's really cool because Harvest Jack will, um, you know, has on his auto will three hit and has a really good chance of stealing a buff like maybe attack up or whatever or unkillable that's a really big one like a, let's say a skull crown you need to kill the skull crown he can kill him while unkillable's up because he just steals it and and kills him so i think that's something that's really cool uh this turtle dude's scary he's really annoying um but the people that have him like when i face him i beat him but i think these people like up here have just way better gear than what i've faced so it's really hard for me to say Oh, um, 
was going to say this guy, Ghostborn, is actually really cool because he he has an unresistible uh, defense down and attack. I think it's what attack up and unresistable defense down. So that's really cool against the high resist team. So if you're trying to counter teams that are doing stuff like this, where it's like, you know, Skartorsis, Sir Nicholas, uh, you know, all this stuff here, uh, his moves are unresistable. So he, this guy has a ton of resistance, but you, you already know that it's, it's unresistable. So bring in Ghostborn. He has actually has a pretty good place in the meta because of that. It's like, like the counter counter. Wow, that's cool. Um, the old, pretty much everything is going to be a speed aura, but there is some exceptions. Like for example, um, uh, high resistance is probably going to be the one. Like you got Razin, you got Warlord as like resistance, uh, re resistance auras that are are pretty popular. But as you can see, most of them are speed auras. The only people that don't do speed auras are like full on defensive teams. Like you see this one with Razin, Molly. Mountain King and Valkyrie, and then you see like you know like this one right here. Uh, Mountain King, it, he actually doesn't have in the lead that he just wants as much health as possible with his Sternick, Molly Tankard, and Mountain King. Makes sense because it also gives Mountain King more damage. Um, but he doesn't want to be too slow, you know, you because they can just like lap you, and you know, and it doesn't really work out. If you run in like all these tanky comps, it's usually Rosin and lead, unless you're lucky enough to have a uh, Warlord. For me personally, like. A, these reward, I, I'm really hoping that they make the rewards really good. I think what most people should be doing is just staying at their level where they can get guaranteed 100% wins and just grind out your great haul. This is cool and all to compete for this, and it was it's fun for like the first week. But I think the smarter thing to do is to just grind out, and then once you've have most of the great haul, like yeah, you know, or most key things like fully maxed out. If you want to like chase for it, go for it. Uh, I think how good the rewards are going to really determine how many people actually continue to do this. But because this is the first week of it, no one really knows the rewards yet. Um, people just want bragging rights. I think people are, are going to be very motivated this week. And, and the only thing that's going to keep this level of activity in Platinum Arena is how good the, if the rewards actually match the, the effort, because people have been putting a lot of work in, to, to maintain this and so hopefully they're rewarded it's only 300 people i think the, these uh rewards probably it's a week long week long and way more effort these rewards need to be massively better than the rewards you get from ultimate uh, ultra nightmare clan boss they need to be better in my opinion if they're not i'm going to be very disappointed for the people that are up that made it up here because it just makes no sense it's a weekly reward you only get one of these every seven days versus the daily that you get from the ultra nightmare so I really hope that they're not so tone deaf that people are getting ancient shards for this. Just like one ancient shard. It should be like legendary book minimum, should be sacred shard minimum, something like void it should be void shard minimum. Void shard minimum. You know, maybe an epic book minimum. They don't care. Well, they wouldn't even care about an epic book. Like what would be like a lot of gems? A lot of gems would be good. I think gems would be a good reward. You don't need to reward them in like I would say like four hundred gems, five hundred gems, something like that, where you can like guarantee it. Because it's like it's hard to say. It's hard to say exactly what would be the good reward for this, but this is a lot, especially at the top. The top, like the amount of games that they're, they're having to play and how good their comp has to be and how, yeah, it's just Jesus. So hopefully it works out for them. If you like content like this, please consider subscribing, hit all the buttons, do the thing. All right, you guys have a good one. Peace.